R series includes a number of functions that make it easy to use and ensure that the device is always ready. The strip chart recorder is located on the top of the defibrillator. You can easily change the paper by pressing on the recorder release latch to open the compartment, remove the old paper, and drop in a new pad with the folded corner on top. The printer operates with a delay of six seconds to ensure the capture of ECG information immediately preceding critical events. The recorder is activated automatically whenever you deliver a defibrillation shock to your patient, a heart rate alarm occurs, or the rhythm analysis function is activated. You can manually activate the recorder at any time by pressing the recorder button. Press it again to stop printing. You can also access and print two types of summary reports, the print log and print chart. The print log summary report provides a chronological list of all interventions. To generate a print log summary report, press the Report Data soft key and then the Print Log soft key. The print chart summary report provides ECG strips for a specific time or for all activated events. To print a print chart summary report for all events, press the Report Data soft key and then press Print Chart, then press Print All. The R-Series has the ability to transfer data from the defibrillator to an external system, such as a network computer, through Wi-Fi, or compact flashcard. To transfer data, place the R-Series in monitor mode. Press the Report Data soft key. Then, press the Transfer Mode soft key. Then, press Report to Card soft key if transferring to a compact flashcard or press Report to Wi-Fi soft key if transferring by Wi-Fi. The R-Series maintains a constant state of clinical readiness by offering a daily automatic test. Testing will occur while the one-step cable is connected to one-step electrodes, paddles, or the test port located on the side of the defibrillator. The R-Series automatic testing verifies that the circuitry for ECG, pacing, and defibrillation is functional, that the battery charge level is sufficient for at least one hour of continuous monitoring and 10 shocks at maximum charge, that the one-step electrodes are attached to the device and that they have not expired, that the device can deliver a 30-joule test shock, that all cables are functional, and that the printer is functional. After successful completion of the automatic test, the R-Series will have a green check mark displayed in the Code Readiness Indicator window. If a red X is present in the window, the R-Series did not pass one of the automatic test requirements and a notification will be displayed on the screen. Take the corrective action, such as replacing the expired electrodes, and perform a manual test. If the red X still does not clear to a green check mark, call Clinical Engineering. To perform a manual test, ensure the one-step cable is plugged into either one-step electrodes, paddles, or the test port. Turn the mode selector to defib. Set the energy to 30 joules and press charge. When the charge ready tone sounds, press the down energy select button until 20 joules is reached. The defibrillator will disarm itself. Press the Energy Select buttons to reset the energy to 30 joules. Press the Charge button. Press Shock. The display should indicate Test OK. If this message does not show, notify Clinical Engineering. Check your institution's policy to confirm manual testing frequency. The pacer can also be tested. To perform this test, turn the mode selector to Pacer. Turn the rate control to 150 paces per minute. And then press the Recorder button. Pacing stimulus markers should occur approximately every centimeter on the strip chart. 
Next, press and hold the 4 to 1 button. Stimulus markers should occur approximately every 4 centimeters. Test the pacer output by turning the control to 0 milliamps. Disconnect the one step cable from the test port or one step electrodes and slowly turn the pacer output control to 16 milliamps or more. The messages, check pads, and poor pad contact will appear alternately. Notice that the pace alarm sounds and the clear pace alarm soft key flashes. Reconnect the one step cable and press the clear pace alarm soft key. Internal handle sets can also be tested prior to use. Connect the internal handle set with attached internal electrodes to the defibrillator and select defib mode. Identify if the internal handle set style you have has a discharge button. If there is a discharge button, verify that button does not stick. Press the Discharge button and verify that there is an audible click and that the button springs back upon release. To determine if the Discharge button is operating correctly, charge the defibrillator to 2 joules. Wait for the Ready Tone. During the Ready Tone, hold both handles and internal electrodes out and away from any person or object. Press and hold the Discharge button located on one of the handles to simulate delivery of energy to the patient. Verify that the defibrillator doesn't discharge and displays the error message, Poor Pad Contact. To verify the integrity of high-voltage wiring contained in the handle set, press Charge on the R-Series front panel at 30 joules and place the electrodes firmly together. For handles with the Discharge button, press and hold the Discharge button on the Apex handle until the defibrillator delivers the energy. For handles without the Discharge button, press and hold the Shock button on the R-Series. The message Test OK will display. Please refer to the Autoclavable Internal Handles and Electrodes Operators Guides for more information. In addition to the automatic testing of the R-Series, Zoll recommends that you perform a daily visual inspection of the device. During this inspection, check that the defibrillator is clean and free of visible damage, that the cables are in good condition and that they are not cut or frayed, and that the connector pins are not bent, that the paper tray has enough paper that the defibrillator is plugged into an AC power, and that the green check mark appears in the code readiness indicator. The readiness dashboard presents several visual indicators that quickly provide the status of the defibrillator. The green AC power LED indicates when the R-series is plugged in. The battery charge indicator uses color to indicate the battery status. Steady yellow indicates the battery is charging. Steady green indicates the battery is charged, and alternating yellow and green indicates no battery is installed or there is a battery charging fault. Batteries are automatically charged whenever the defibrillator is plugged in. A new, fully charged battery will last for four hours of continuous ECG monitoring or 100 defibrillation shocks at full energy. The R-Series is powered by Shorepower lithium-ion batteries, which you can easily access on top of the defibrillator. The battery runtime indicator on the top of the battery displays the amount of usable time remaining. To display the status, press and release the display button on the top of the battery. The LED light illuminates from left to right. The last LED to light indicates the remaining runtime. After a year of use, the amber light on the top of the battery will stay lit, which means the battery needs to be reconditioned with biomedical engineering in the Shure Power battery charger. In the event you need to change a battery, simply press the release latch and pull up, then snap the new battery into place.